Hey everyone, so today I will be talking about uh, which programming language as a beginner you should learn and how you can get started with your coding. So uh, before getting into it, why should you learn about programming languages? Learning programming languages will help you in developing your problem solving skills and analytical skills. So for example, when you are uh, like trying to write a new algorithm for certain problems or making your existing algorithms or any relevant problems into more efficient and fast then you have to think outside the box so that will help your analytical skills as well as problem solving skills very much so second thing is versatility and job markets so when you are uh, when you know multiple programming languages or uh, in demand programming languages that will help you to get job more easily and also aim for a better salary packages so the third point is innovation and creation. So imagine in programming, the only thing that can limit you is your imagination. So let's say you want to build an app or maybe a website with some new creative uh, designs and all which no one have ever seen. You can do it by programming. You want to build a new app. You want to solve a certain particular problem which does uh, which is not yet solved or which has not yet designed yet. You can do it just by programming. Imagine all the games happening. It's, it's programming at its core, right? So you can develop any kind of gaming, any kind of animations, any kind of... Uh, algorithms so it's just your imagination that can limit you so that's the best thing so now let's dive into the key question of today which programming language should you learn so there are like more than hundreds of programming languages right now so it's an overwhelming decisions to make right so today you're uh, learning java and suddenly you go to know there is a trend of python going on then you're switching from java to python then while learning python you again found a new thing you want to learn c c sharp for microsoft then you're switching there then again you found something different then you have to move around so this is a lot of clutter and a lot of overwhelming stuff so you should not go and learn in that way okay so i'm going to give you a few programming languages as an example and i have already made a video on programming languages and their uh, usage and all in uh, my previous videos I, am, I'm, I will link it up here and you can watch that playlist for a detailed explanation of different programming languages so right now let me give you a few examples and uh, some uh, roadmap for you the first and the most important programming language i would say is c and c plus plus so first of all c is a very low level language as compared to any other uh, language i'm going to say and it will help you to understand how the software and the hardware interacts. It really goes in depth with how the operating system and the kernel uh, talk with each other and how your coding will execute in the hardware, right? So that helps you to, you know, shape up your mind on understanding how the programming actually works underneath. Then the second thing is C++. So C++ already have most of the things of C, uh, C and with the understanding of C and C++, you can build most efficient programming. Okay. So for example, when I was working in uh, my previous company, like for in example in Zoom, we had to uh, make almost real time translation, and we used a mix of C and Python to make it more fast or more efficient. And in my first job, we have we are writing a lot of machine learning algorithms in Python. But at the end, at certain stages, we, we are using C++ to boost the performance, to boost the speed. So C and C++ is a key languages that will help you to fasten up your program. In real world, it's really important. And uh, there are less people who knows these legacy uh, programming languages. So uh, it will really help you to shape up your knowledge to understand the programming language. Now, the second programming language today I'm going to say is about Python. So Python, as you all know, uh, I'm not going to say everyone should learn it. It's one of the easiest language to learn. So never start with it. Okay, that's very important. You should only start with C and C++. Then only you will get to know the core programming. Then you, uh, after once you know those all, then you can choose Python because Python is very good for machine learning. It has a lot of frameworks for supporting backend development. For such scenarios, Python is a good option. And more about Python, I've already explained in my previous videos. You can watch that. Then the third one is Java. So Java is nowadays used for mostly for uh, enterprise software development and many of the legacy softwares are still developed in Java. If you want to develop Android applications, Java is your option. Third one is JavaScript. So JavaScript is also like, uh, it's mostly used in the full stack development or front end development as well as in backend development. It's mostly for the web development framework, I would say. 
and you cannot escape JavaScript if you are focusing on any kind of web development side and the other one I would say is Swift so if you want to be an iOS developer or you want to develop a software for any Apple ecosystem then you have to learn Swift so uh, if I go on there are like hundreds of programming languages but why I mentioned these key things are like so first and foremost like I said initially you have to be working only on C and C++ understand it learn it uh, practice it once you know that then choose the next programming language you want to learn so how you will choose the next one so when I joined my first company it was completely Python the whole team and whole uh, product was uh, built on Python and I didn't know anything about it but it took me like around two to four weeks to learn Python and I got good at it and later I worked like next four to five years in Python and core Python programming only then later when I switched to Zoom, we had something called Cython, which is a mix of C and Python and it's a completely different programming language. It was uh, written in completely different format and everything. So even that was also a very huge change for me. And in certain times, we uh, I even have to use a language called Clojure uh, for doing uh, regressions and all. Uh, so saying in real world, you will have to handle with multiple programming languages uh, as per various scenarios. So you should be, uh, be diversifying your knowledge skills on programming level. So how you will diversify? So you should uh, work on the project that you are interested in. You should choose the domain you are in. So try it out in your various semesters, in various years, uh, like in one year or maybe in one semester, learn something, uh, work on it, and uh, you have to be an expert on it. Not, not an expert in the sense you should know everything about it, but you should know all the basics of it and uh, try it out for the one year. Then in the next year, try with the, another language, another project and So have a diversification in that so that you can always learn a new language when it comes to you, okay? Even though that language is never up to you. So that's what I want to tell you about how to choose a programming language. I hope this is very clear to you and uh, I hope uh, you will make a right decisions. If you have any doubts regarding this, just comment down below and I will try to help you out. I will uh, try, to, I try to reply as much as possible. So next I want to tell you how you will get started with coding, right? So how you will learn these programming languages, how you will be consistent in it, how you will learn more about it. So for this, the most important thing is set a realistic goal, okay? So set a goal where you can achieve something in an easy way. Don't set goals like you're going to be an expert on C++ or an expert on Python. But instead of that, set a goal that you're going to finish a small project. Set a goal that you will going to be solving lead code question, hacker rank questions uh, in uh, next one week or something like that. So, uh, so gradually you will build on it, you will find issues, you will find problems in your coding, then you will gradually build on it you will improve it so that's how you will learn second thing find a reliable resource and this resource can be maybe your uh, professor in your college maybe it can be a, a youtube uh, tutor or you can read some uh, you can take some online courses like in udemy or uh, udacity so uh, it's up to you. you have to find what's the best way for you for me it was youtube video so i learned most of the things from youtube there was a lot of instructors and i i had the freedom to choose which one i love and i followed with them i solved problems in lead code and hacker rank and i got a better knowledge about how everything works so that's how i learned various programming languages and uh, for me the best thing or the best teacher for me was my own project so solving your own projects is a heck of a task and you want to figure it out how it is done so you will uh, research on stack overflow you will research on the documentation so reading a lot of thing and it's a gradual process it's not something i did in one day or maybe in one month it took me a couple of weeks maybe a month maybe a six month so in this six month the knowledge builds on you and you will become gradually will become a good at those programming languages so you can be in that way next one i want to tell is start with the basics understand what every keywords in that uh, language means for example when you're starting with python know what is a list in python know what is tuple in it what is the difference between them how how it affects the efficiency of the programming language what are their constraints what are their benefits what are their cons so understand the basic theories of this programming language it will help you a lot in your future okay these small minute things can build a lot of you. So this uh, basic core knowledge of every programming language or the programming language you are choosing to learn is an important factor. And next point is be consistent. 
So what I mean is by consistent is when you pick up a programming languages, go with it, start doing your problem, solve it, uh, build projects on it and be consistent and practice regularly on that. It doesn't mean you have to solve four hours of uh, programming challenge every day. It just means at least dedicate five to 10 minutes every day on solving certain uh, problems on lead code or hacker rank, whatever you are interested in and solving that particular language that you are interested in and uh, be consistent on that so gradually you'll be uh, picking up more knowledge about these things okay and another point is join this uh, programming language community there are a lot of community built around these programming languages i know i have been to a lot of python meetups and when i've been to this python meetups i got to learn a lot about python which i never knew before i got to know how i can access the OS level controls in Python programming languages while attending a meetup. I was uh, also attending a certain Android meetup and I got to know how this Java and the Android um, IDs are working together, how it is, how we can make the program more faster, how, what is the best way to utilize those frameworks. So uh, joining a community will help you to gain knowledge from different person, from different experts, right? So it's mostly, it's a free community. You can join them, you can learn from them, you can contribute to them. So uh, try to find few communities or maybe the best thing, you can build your own community, maybe find them from online, find them from uh, Discord channels, find them from YouTube, find them from uh, whatever way you can and build a community of your own at least and uh, join them be active and you will learn a lot from that and the last and final point i want to say is build a project and that is a must i always say build a project for whatever thing you want to learn whether it's a programming language whether it's a new technology whether it is a new domain whatever it is build a project it can be basic building a calculator it can be basic calculating your excel sheet to some calculations or the best I can say as a student, you can write a program to calculate how much attendance you need or how much classes you need to attend to maintain the minimum attendance percentage, right? So there are many small, small ideas you can do and just start with a basic project and develop your skills. Okay. Once you have a grasp of the fundamentals of the programming language, it is essential to practice on it. Practice is a key habit you need to build to be good at anything, right? So for practicing the best thing, uh, like I said previously, you should start with a project. So build a mini project, like I said earlier, whatever it is, whatever you are comfortable with it, uh, do that, try to finish uh, each mini project, add it to your resume or your LinkedIn profile and build your profile along with it. Second thing is, Go for uh, some uh, coding challenging platforms, for example, like Lead Code, Hacker Rank, Code Chef, etc. Go there and try solving pro uh, problems there. It will help you in two ways. One, you can develop your programming skills. Second thing, you will learn data structure and algorithm. So always, you know, uh, two words with one bullet, right? So go with that. And the third point is contribute to open source projects. So when you go to GitHub or you can just Google for open source projects, you can see a lot in GitHub, right? So join those open source projects, understand about it, read about it, what, what have others done on it, what kind of modules are they building, what features are they building, and see if you can contribute something into it, right? So if you can uh, raise a pull request and contribute to it, it's a huge for your profile. In reviewers or any hiring companies will be coming behind you just if you have these skills of contributing to open source projects. So uh, look for it, try to uh, contribute something to open source project and it will change your life. Mentorship and networking. So try to find a mentor, try to find uh, people who can teach you, who can uh, guide you in the right way and uh, engage with them, build a network, strong network of people who have same passion as you. So it will help you to, you know, build your circle better. You can find new opportunities, new problems, new ways of learning things. Okay. And the last point regarding this for you is personalize and expand your portfolio. Okay, so this is something every student misses. So everyone is focused on learning a pro programming language, focused on building some projects, focused on doing something here and there, right? You should always design your roadmap in such a way it is personalized to you. It's unique to you. It doesn't mean like some one of your friend is learning Python, it doesn't mean you should learn Python. It could be different to you. And even though if you're learning a new language, let's say you're learning Java, it's not necessary you should be building an uh, Android application or it is not necessary you're building some random uh, Java application. It can be something you saw or you wanted to solve a problem. So build it in a personalized way so that, you know, whenever you present yourself, 
uh, you can explain this project in such a unique way that nobody has seen it before or maybe nobody has seen it so commonly as compared to other students or as other people right so that's and by doing each of these projects uh, personalizing yourself uh, building your portfolio it will help you to build a good resume for you a good profile for you so when you have all these skills you upload it in your uh, linkedin and all your profile will catch a lot of attention and it will help you in, in your long run okay so focus on this as well now let's talk about the journey from here right so now you uh, you have chosen your programming languages you are doing multiple uh, projects uh, you are developing your skills in various uh, other way you are uh, expanding your portfolio right now what happens after this so one thing you should understand is learning or being a programmer being a software engineer being a coder or being a developer it is a continuous journey it never stops it it starts from your college but it never ends as long as you're working as long as you're building something on it as long as you're in this profession it's a continuous journey so embrace it uh, understand it and it is unique to you so don't worry if you're a slow learner don't worry if you're uh, not getting it as quick as your friends are getting it so just don't worry about it just have patience and time will teach you and you just have to be dedicated you just have to be consistent okay and uh, like from my example i can say like every time when i was learning python i learned python 2.7 and later when python 3 has uh, launched i have to learn new things about python 3.2 and now python 3.9 is there so i have to be updated on that so another thing about this field is or this profession you have to be updated about this technology update it's not necessary that you have to know everything you just have to know about the skills or technical skills that you are already in, uh, good at so for example i'm good at python c plus plus and uh, right now in javascript so i have to follow what's happening on this uh, community what's the latest update what are the new technologies released based on it so things like that so be updated keep yourself updated read the documentations if uh, something you're stuck with so for example uh, let's say there is something called inbuilt sorting algorithm in python so do you know which sorting algorithm does python uses why the sorting al inbuilt sorting algorithm is faster than the algorithm you are writing or maybe when you write um pop function in python so how the popping is happening what is the input what are the parameters can i pop anything so how you will know about it so go and read the documentation about it understand it uh, like learn in a very fundamental way so when you pick up one small function one small uh, part learn it understand it and move on so this will happen gradually this will happen as per your requirements so that's all about it i hope you got a good roadmap about how to learn programming language how to be consistent on it how you can implement it in your life and how you can grow from there i hope uh, all my points are clear to you if you have any doubts just comment down below i will try to make more new videos regarding it and i hope you all check out my video regarding the various programming languages and i have uh, given various examples where it is used and why it is used and all in those videos so please check it out i will link it down the description as well so uh, before concluding i want to just repeat two things to you again be patient and be consistent and I'm sure you will be able to achieve your goals, get a good placement or good uh, jobs with a good packages. So that's all about it today. So if you find this video helpful, please give a thumbs up and subscribe and please comment down whatever queries you have and please share it with your friends too. So have a good day. Take care and bye.